In this video, I'm going to show you how to install the brand new Sapphire Pulse Radeon RX 7600 Gaming OC graphics card. Now, before we can get to the install, we're going to do a quick unboxing, that way you know everything that's in this box. Now, don't worry, if you're not interested in the unboxing, you can just skip ahead in the timeline below. But anyway, let's get started. All right, so here we can see the Sapphire Pulse AMD Radeon RX 7600, overclocked with eight gigs of RAM. Coming along the side over here, basically just goes over the naming convention and everything. And then again, the eight gigs. Back here, we have some of the features and specifications, specifications listed right over here. Then some of the features over here, these are mainly driver features, but regardless of that, they're features. And then some more of the same on the other side, key features, the naming convention and everything. So nothing incredibly crazy here or along the top of the card or along the bottom. So let's go ahead and open it up real quick. All right, then here we have some of the manufacturer information. Nothing along the back. Here we have the Sapphire Graphics Card Quick Installation Guide. You don't have to worry too much about this. We're going to go over it in this video. And a foam insert. <laughs> I'm gonna put the card aside just for one second. Let's see if there's anything else in here. Nope. Nothing else there. All right, and then the card. Sapphire Pulse, so there's not going to be any kind of RGB lighting on here. So just removing this, always remember to remove this film. And now, not incredibly important, but it's always nice to take it off. These little fans here are going to have that plastic as well, but it's a lot harder to take this off. Okay, and then just go around making sure that every little piece is removed. Beautiful looking card here with their red design and then their fans are nice as well. Pulse logo right over there. Along the bottom over here we see another piece that we want to remove. So then serial number and all that stuff over here. And we can also see some of their pipes very cool then coming along the side over here we can see the sapphire on a gradient from red to black and it looks really nice there then coming over here we can see their fin design and their pipe sticking out over here then over here an eight pin this will require an eight pin in order to work and it also requires a minimum of a 550 watt power supply and then radion right over here Along the back over here, we can see their fins again. Looks pretty standard, nothing wrong with that. Same over here. Then we can see right over here where the exhaust would occur from those fins and just removing all of these so that we can see three DP connections, 1.4 and one HDMI 2.1 connection. Then coming along the rear over here, pulse with the little pulse over here, and then the Radeon Sapphire Pulse down here as well. We can see cutouts over here for some of that air to come out from the top of the card. And then as well over here, again, I love when they do this. So the fan's going to be blowing over here. We can see the hole down here. So the heat is going to be coming out of here and either sucked up by the ceiling of your case if you have liquid cooling or just fans on the top expelling that air or from the rear of your case if you have that fan also expelling air from the rear. Again, I love when they do this. I think it's a great idea. And for those of you with case constraints, the card measures 9.5 inches in length. I'll go ahead and list at the bottom the millimeter conversion and in height, Card is 105.23 millimeters. And in depth here is 44.38 millimeters. So it's not a very long card. This card does have 32 compute units with 2048 stream processors and 32 ray accelerators, along with 
64 AI accelerators, and 32 megs of Infinity Cache. This does have 2,755 megahertz of a boost clock, along with 2,355 megahertz of a game clock. Now, the thing that's kind of scary, and we're going to find out in my next video, is that this only has 8 gigs of RAM, and it is 128 bit of GDDR6, by the way. Now it is 18 gigabits per second RAM, so it is fast RAM. It has a TGP of 145 watts and a board power of 185 watts. As we can see over here, it is a two slot card, again with the dual X cooling technology, and they are dual ball bearing fans. This back plate is aluminum as well. And one other side note to mention, this does support AV1 encoding. So that is very nice. So now, without wasting any more time, let's get to an install. Now, depending on what state you have your system, there is a little prep work we need to take care of. We're gonna run through all of that right now. First step is we're going to remove the old video card, drivers as well. And once we're done with that, we're gonna go ahead and install the new video card and then install the drivers. Now, the last thing you want when you install a brand new video card is to have a bunch of issues. So let's go ahead and take care of what could potentially cause those issues. In this system, we're going to find already the EVGA GeForce RTX 3060 XE graphics card. And in the later review, I'm going to be comparing the performance of this card and the 7600. So stay tuned for that. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of these drivers first. Okay, so let's go ahead, open up whichever browser you'd like to use. And we'll go to Wagnard soft.com scroll down a little tiny bit and then we'll click on ddu display driver uninstaller click on close on these ads and then we'll scroll down a little tiny bit and we'll click click here for download and support scroll down a little bit more then click display driver uninstaller ddu whatever version that may be at that time and then finally we'll either click ddu portable or ddu installer doesn't really matter i'll go ahead and click on the portable one Okay, now while that's downloading, we'll come over here, open up a new tab, and go to amd.com. We'll click Downloads and Support. Drivers under AMD Radeon Graphics. Then scroll down a little tiny bit, and we'll select Graphics. AMD Radeon RX 7000 series. And then down here, we'll see the AMD Radeon RX 7600 series. Don't freak out if you don't see that right now. The card hasn't been released yet, but you will see it once the card has been released. Then you would select the card here and click submit. Now I already have the drivers, so we're gonna go ahead and skip that. And DDU has already downloaded. So we'll click up here, open file for the DDU we've just downloaded. And then we'll select where we want this to install. That's fine if it goes in the downloads folder. I'll just put the subfolder of one and then extract. We'll close that out of here. Now with that downloaded and extracted, we'll right click on the start button, hover over shutdown or sign out, and we'll press the left shift key and we'll hold it. And now we'll click restart. After restarting, we'll come into the choose an option screen. So we'll select troubleshoot, advanced options, then startup settings. On the startup settings, restart the change windows such as, we're going to look at enable safe mode. So we'll just click restart. After restarting, we'll come to the startup settings window. We have a bunch of options here. The option I like to use is number four, enable safe mode. Then in safe mode, we'll just go ahead, open up file explorer. We'll go to downloads. And now in that one directory, we extracted DDU to open that up, go in here and we'll select display driver uninstaller, double click on that. Okay, on here. And they always have this a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to Minimize this little tiny bit so that we can actually read it. And then if you have an AMD chipset, meaning an AMD processor here, you're going to remove all of these. The reason being is the AMD chipset uses the AMD chipset driver. This is an Intel board. So because it's an Intel board, it's okay that we put all the checks back over here. And because we have an NVIDIA video card, I'm going to be placing all the checks here. Now, if we had an AMD video card, it's still okay if we place checks under NVIDIA over here. Just remember, uncheck everything here if you have an AMD chipset. If you have an Intel chipset like I do, and you have an AMD video card, I don't have one right now, but if you did, you just place a check over all of these and you'd be good. And again, 
place a check over all the NVIDIAs. It's okay to leave a check under Intel specific. One very important one that you want to make sure you have in case it comes unchecked with most of the time it does is prevent download of drivers from Windows update when Windows search for a driver for a device. Place a check here. That way it doesn't go install those drivers on its own. And then we click close here. And then under select device type, we'll select GPU. Then if you have an NVIDIA, make sure you select NVIDIA. If you have an AMD card, make sure you select AMD. If you're using AMD on-die graphics or Intel on-die graphics, those are still graphics. So if you have AMD on-die graphics, select AMD and remove them. If you're using Intel on-die graphics, select Intel and remove them. They're still graphics. Now, since we have NVIDIA, I'm going to select NVIDIA. And then I'm going to select clean and shut down. Clean and shut down because after it cleans those drivers out, we're going to shut down the computer so that we can install the brand new video card. This is only going to take a few seconds. So one very important thing, now that we have the system off, before you touch anything in the system, you need to make sure you ground yourself. So on the side of the case, metal, steel, or aluminum, preferably a piece that is not painted, but kind of don't have an option many times, go ahead and touch it. Make sure you get all that ESD off of your hands. If you have ESD on your hands and you touch one of your components, you could potentially fry it. So then after you've touched it and after you're good, you might have had a little shock, but the fact that you discharged that shock onto the case, now you could touch your new graphics card without fear of frying it. So let's keep going. Now to make it easier on myself, I like to film removing the video card and installing the video card with the system standing up. For most of you, it's easier with the system laying down. So first thing I'm going to do is remove the HDMI or DP cable from the video card or from the back of the system right over here if you're using on die graphics and go ahead and flick the power supply off that way the, there is no power running through the system that could potentially make your system turn on when you insert or remove the old video card. Now, if you are using a graphics card and it does have a PCIe 6 or 8 pin power connector coming from the power supply, we're going to need to remove it. On this particular card, the clip is on the bottom. So just make sure you press and hold that little clip and then you pull that PCIe power connection out. That's what it looks like just in case. And we're going to need to reuse that. So keep it around. Just move it to the side for now. Depending where it is on your system, we're going to be removing the screws over here so that we can remove the card. You may want to keep your hand under the card so that it doesn't fall. Now, one of the things keeping the card installed, not just the PCIe slot, is the little clip right over here that's actually holding the card locked in place. Now you can see it right over here, it is a piece of plastic holding the card in place. If you're going to be standing up the system like I am, make sure you have your hand underneath the graphics card and I'm showing you with a plastic tip. So just push that in and that unlocks the card. So you may have noticed the card pull out a little teeny tiny bit. So to lock it, so that locked in place. Then again, now that I'm going to unlock it, make sure you look at the card. Moves a little tiny bit. Now we can just pull the card out. It comes out really easily. Now the same way, when we push that down, it unlocked the card. If this is a brand new board and there was never a card there, this might be in the locked position like that. All you need to do is push it down so that it's unlocked. Many boards are going to have different methods of this, so just make sure it's unlocked. You may need to look inside of your manual. Now we're going to grab the card and we're going to insert these gold fingers into this PCIe slot right over here. Then of course, if we didn't have anything here before, you might need to remove this PCIe slots, these covers right over here, if they were there. But since we had a card there already, we don't have them. And just slide that right into here and you'll notice that locking mechanism will lock in place in one second locked right in place easy enough and now let's go ahead and just screw the card in make sure it doesn't wiggle around in there and now we'll grab that same pcie cable that we had now on this one you'll notice there's a little clip right along the top Whereas before this clip was on the bottom, now it's on the top. 
So we're going to need to flip this over and have that clip right along the top. And this is an eight pin. So it's fine if you use a six plus two or a straight eight pin PCIe cable. And just line up those pins, push that in there and you'll notice this little pin pop up when it slides beyond that little piece of plastic and it locks right in place. Easy enough, right? And now we'll just want to plug in the HDMI cable on your brand new graphics card on the HDMI 2.1 connection. And just realize if you're using on die graphics before, you don't want to plug that in over here because you'll continue using the on die graphics. You want to use your brand new graphics card. The other thing is you want to make sure you turn your power supply back on. So now we'll go ahead and turn the system on. Remember, there are no pretty lights. This is the Pulse card. All right, so now that we're in Windows, we've downloaded the AMD drivers and we've just DDU'd the system. So now we'll go to File Explorer, Downloads, and we'll double click to open up the zip for the new graphics drivers. And we'll copy the drivers out of the zip folder and just paste it right into the Downloads folder. You never want to install drivers from, or anything from within inside of a zip unless it's a single file though that is a single file. But anyway, now we'll go ahead and double click the AMD drivers to install them. Install. Now here under additional options, if available, I like to do a factory reset, but now it notices that there are no drivers. So it's not asking us for that. So then we'll just go ahead, click install. This will take, as it says, two and a half minutes, but it'll probably take a little less. All right, so now it's done here. It's totally up to you if you want to allow AMD to collect anonymous usage information. You can leave it checked or unchecked. I personally like to uncheck it. Here's the biggie. A lot of people are bothered to restart their system. Nobody wants to do it for some reason, and it only takes a few seconds, at most a minute or two, depending how slow your system is. This is incredibly important. Right now, there are a lot of files in use that AMD, Nvidia, Intel, whoever can't access unless they're free. That typically frees up during a restart, either towards the end of the restart or towards the beginning of the restart. So that is needed in order for that to work. If you install this and then click finish, don't bother restarting and now you install something else, chances are that other program that you're going to install might touch those folders and files as well, negating what that just did. So if you want your system to work perfectly well, restart. When you're back in Windows, do whatever else you want it to do. And then we'll click restart. And now that we're back in Windows, go ahead and right click on the desktop. We'll select AMD Software Adrenaline Edition. We can either do a quick setup or skip this for right now. And then we can see everything the AMD Adrenaline software has in store for us. It has a ton. So here we can launch games. Also adjust your global graphics for those games over here, ports, power saving, standard, whatever profile you'd like to select. Then your recent games over here tells you over here, your drivers and software version. It allows you to also check for updates. AMD link status, if you use the AMD link, which is actually a pretty cool feature. Media and capture, take screenshots, record a video, instant replay, instant GIF or GIF, whatever you like to say. Gaming, we went over that a little bit ago. And record and streaming for exactly just that. And performance right over here. That way we can see the FPS, how much of the GPU, CPU we're utilizing, tracking over here. And then over here under tuning, we can do some overclocking as well. Then advisors lets us know a few of the features and specs that might improve our gaming performance. It's not just that. If we go under the little gear over here, or the cog is our settings. We have a lot more settings over here. So under systems, we have a little bit of the same. Then they have over here, a lot of good information under graphics. Some of the same we went over before. We can enable AMD Radeon Super Resolution, anti-lag chill, boost image sharpening, enhance sync, wake for vertical refresh and more down here. Then we can go under display, a lot more options right over here. Now, if you have FreeSync, which I do, but I'm using a capture card, so it won't work for me right now, you would just click to enable that right over here. And that'll give you a ton more performance under audio and video. 
utilizing the new AMD noise suppression. So removing background noise when you're recording, which is awesome. I'm not taking advantage of that right now. So you hear my loud system. Hotkeys, you can assign different hotkeys over here. Accounts, AMD link, relive VR, more record and stream options, a ton more before we had none. And their latest video encoding type, AV1, that'll definitely help a ton. Performance, few of them over here, and then preferences. So after setting all those things over here, we'll close out of here. We'll right click on the background again. We'll go under display settings, scroll down a tiny bit, and we'll go under advanced display and then choose a refresh rate. This particular monitor does 120 hertz, but because I'm using a capture card, I'm capped off at 60 hertz. So if your monitor can do 240, 360, 120, 160, whatever, make sure you come in here and select it. If not, by default, it'll be 60 or 59.9. So definitely you lose out on some performance there. And it makes a huge difference just for overall feel of the system, so much more smooth, that along with FreeSync makes a huge difference in how smooth your games are or overall applications. So this video is to help you learn how to install your own graphics card. Remove an old graphics card, remove the old drivers, install your new graphics card and install the new drivers and then a little optimization there on the graphics side as well and Windows, just a tiny bit. There's nothing worse than spending however much the card is going to be and then having to spend another hundred bucks or whatever to pay somebody to do that for that you could buy another piece of hardware that's going to help your gaming experience maybe a new monitor so coming up real soon i'm going to show you the performance difference between that 3060 xc and this brand new 7600 is there a big difference is there a reason to switch you're going to find out here if that video is available just check it out right over here and if it isn't, check out this video here, which will help you regardless. This is Iggy with This Bites for You Up. See you guys.